Hello, everybody. This is David Montesano, founder of College Match. I'm privileged here to meet today with a former student of mine, Sabina Aliv. How are you, Sabina? Good, I've been great. How have you been? Great, doing well. And, and today what we're gonna talk about is the liberal arts launch, right? It's been a while since we talked and I'm, I'm so excited to catch up and learn what you've been up to. Um, you know, we, we worked together when you were at French American and, and maybe our listeners would be interested to know that you were in the IB program there. And mm -hmm. then you decided, you had a couple choices with college or maybe more than a couple, but tell us a little bit about that because I know it was sort of an agonizing choice in some ways, but you chose Haverford College, which many people aren't um, familiar with, but it's a liberal arts college. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about your choice to go there and, and what you study. Yeah, of course. Um, so when I was applying to schools, I was very interested in liberal arts education just because I was coming from the IB program. I was coming from a smaller school, so I kind of wanted to stay in a smaller environment. And I did like the approach of, you know, the liberal arts education being well-rounded, getting to experience um, a little bit of every field. And as I was looking for liberal arts schools, Haverford was one that popped up on my radar. Um, I applied to a couple of schools, Haverford being one of them. Once I got in, all of a sudden I changed my mind and I wanted to go to a big school. <laughs> um, and I was insistent that I wanted a football team at my school, but David told me that Haverford was one of his favorite schools and that I must visit when I go to the East Coast. So Harford ended up kind of being an afterthought on the trip where I was squeezing it in while looking at other schools. Uh, lo and behold, <laughs> second I stepped on campus, um, I was very impressed. And I still remember to this day how we made the decision. I was touring colleges with my dad after I'd gotten in. I actually went to sit in on a class while my dad went on a tour of the campus. And I get back from the class and I loved it. You know, they included me in the discussion. It was great. And I come back and I see my dad and my dad looks at me and he's like, this is where you're going to be next year. You may not know it yet, but this is your school. Um, with that being said, I, was, I told him I wanted to go on a tour as well. So he went on a second tour with me and I was very quickly sold. Um, I very much liked the community feel it was clear that they really prioritized students and their research. And I realized that the access I would have in the science department would be as unparalleled to anything I would find in a bigger school, um, just because they very much trusted their students with all the equipment and gave you a lot of agency in your work. Um, we kind of blazed through all the other college tours, but we all knew it was gonna happen. So then I ended up at Haverford. Looking back, I'm very happy with the decision. It is a smaller school, but I was able, the ties that I feel I was able to create, um, I would not have been able to create at a larger school. So I went on to Haverford. I ended up stu studying chemistry. I went in knowing that I was interested in the health sector. I was very science minded, um, but Haverford kept me grounded, which was nice with their prereqs. So I ended up taking a lot of classes that I don't think I would have taken otherwise, but have now are now some of my favorite classes that I've taken. I learned to enjoy writing, something I very much did not like. David can attest to that <laughs> um, through my college process. Uh, but I studied chemistry with a um, minor, with a concentration in biochemistry. I did my thesis in organic chemistry. And I think one of the coolest things as a chem student was that your junior year, you get a key to all the labs um, in the science wing. And that's their way of saying, hey, we've taught you how to use all this equipment. We trust you to go use this equipment, come in and work on your own time, which I've talked to many friends and this is equipment that usually is reserved for PhD student use. Um, but seeing that we didn't have any of that, um, it was really great to be able to get that experience and talk to friends. And, you know, I feel like I was able to really get ahead with my research expertise during my time there. To this day, I still chat with some of my professors. I go back to campus quite often, probably like two to three times a year. 
considering they're all the way on the East Coast and I'm in San Francisco. Um, while at Haverford, I ended up playing squash for my last two years. Uh, I also was on Honor Code Council, so something that is very unique to uh, Haverford is our Honor Code. So it's a completely student-run school. Uh, we write an Honor Code and we um, have quorum for it twice a year. We kind of, you know, go back through it, make sure there's no changes we want to make. And with that, that was something that I thought was truly unique to Haverford was the fact that because of that, there was a lot of trust between professors and students. So I, you know, one of the most special things I think is final exams, you know, at a lot of schools, you might end up with three final exams on, in one day and you're going to be stressed here trying to squeeze it in. But that's not how the real world works, you know real world, you usually have these long, you have projects that are due and you kind of figure out how you're going to manage your time and get them all done by your deadlines. And Haverford was kind of, was trying to prepare us for that. So with finals, you know, in the spring you get two weeks and they say, you know what finals you have to do. You figure out what day you want to take what final. So as soon as you're ready to take a final, you show up at the registrar's office, you pick up your exam, you take that final, you turn it in, and then you can go on and Take your other one. So if you decide you want to take three finals in one day, you can do that. But if you decide you want to spread your time out and take, you know, one every four days, you can also do that, which I thought was very great. Super helpful. Uh, Sabina, I have a, a, qu a question to ask because I'm sure our listeners would want to know while you were at Haverford, it's so it's, you know, just to give people an idea, it's about a thousand to 2000 students. And yeah, you, it looks like from your resume, your LinkedIn profile, that you're, you actually were a chemistry teaching assistant while you were also, and you also did research. And then I see all this experience that you got at different hospitals and different research centers. Tell us a little bit about how that stuff came to fruition for you, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, of course. So our school was 1,200 kids, <laughs> so definitely on the smaller side. Um, but I, you know, while I was there, I was able to chem TA, um, I was able to tutor. It was very much, you know, it was conducive to that type of environment where everyone kind of goes through, you, you play a lot of roles, you know, you're not just a student in that community. And with that being said, Haverford, although it is a small school, it's in Philly, there's a lot of surrounding schools. We're actually in a consortium with Swarthmore, Bryn Mawr, and UPenn. So we were allowed to take classes at all of those schools. Um, and with that, we were also given a lot of opportunities. We have a lot of ties to neighboring hospitals. Um, and Haverford was really good about letting us know about these opportunities, helping us with applications, you know, getting us out in the field. If you were interested in something, they were very supportive on that. And they were, I, you know, they funded one summer, I wanted to do research in San Francisco. And, you know, I was worried I'm at a small school in Philly. How am I going to find ties in San Francisco? How am I going to get um, funded? And I spoke to the um, to our like pre med department there, letting them know that I want to be at a hospital, but I would love to be at home. And they told me they're like, "Hey, we have a fellowship where if you find a volunteer position in San Francisco where you're working in the medical field or in a hospital or whatever, we'll actually pay for it. So you don't have to worry about having to, you know." find somewhere where it's like through a university and I have to make sure I'm getting paid, you know, because um, through the summer, they're like find something that you're truly interested in doing out there. So I ended up working at a nonprofit that um, reduces, uh, that focused on reducing recidivism rates at San Francisco General Hospital for um, violence related injuries. And Haverford had a fellowship that sponsored that whole, my whole summer, which was really wonderful. Oh, that sounds great. And so, so they, that, that might not have happened at a larger university, by the way, because it sounds like they can kind of take care of people individually and whatever your journey exactly. is, they can sort of really counsel and even facilitate in this case, it sounds like uh, the next steps or help you with that. Um, I'm curious too, did, was it sort of similar when you decided to apply to graduate school? And tell us a little bit about how you chose the graduate school that you did. As I was saying, I've always been very interested in the healthcare sector. Um, and I graduated Haverford a little confused, wondering, do I want to do medical school? Do I want to go into health tech? Do I want to go into public health? Kind of a lot of big questions looming over my head. And 
I've always, you know, medical school, it was always on the horizon, but it, I was very adamant about the fact that I didn't want to go to medical school until I knew what I wanted to do with my degree. And so that's how I ended up working at that same nonprofit for a year um, while also working at the hospital and trying to kind of get a sense of what do I like in the healthcare field. And I really, so as I mentioned, I was working at this nonprofit, I really liked the prevention side of medicine. I liked the fact that, you know, instead of trying to treat patients, you know, we, instead of trying to treat problems, what if we looked at it and from the other side and try to prevent these problems. And it was, you know, being able to come to a patient and have, when you're treating a patient, it's not just, um, you're not just focused on the physical ailments. There's also social ailments. And how can we look at a patient um, as a whole and treat all the aspects uh, of their life? And so the, at that point, I realized that I would love to go do a master's, I would love to go into a grad program that allowed me to explore that a little bit more and see if that's something I would be interested in doing in the healthcare sector. So I applied to two graduate programs. I applied to the UCSF um, Global Health, Public Health Program, and then I applied to Stanford's Community Health and Preventive Research. Uh, was very excited about both. I knew I wanted to stay in the area, so I only applied to those two. Figuring if I didn't get in, it wasn't meant to be. Um, and if I did, I would make the decision then. Um, I was lucky enough to get into both. And at that point, I you know, talked to some of my mentors. One of my big mentors was this doctor I'd been working with. She was a trauma surgeon at UCSF. And what she explained to me is that I had already created ties at UCSF. I had a lot of ties at that institution and I had done a lot of work there. And you know, both programs were, be were very good. And so at that point, it's important to start building your network and you know, create ties with other institutions, go see how other institutions function, um, what they're doing in the sector you're interested in. And that is kind of how I decided that Stanford's program um, was the way to go versus sticking with what I already knew. That's so exciting. And I, and I also saw from your resume that you spent some time doing research in Peking, I think, through Stanford's yeah. program. Right? Was that, that must have been very, very interesting and exciting too. Yeah, that was very cool. And I will say, so fun little, it's been really cool to get to experience the whole big university versus small liberal arts school. And I have a lot of friends that had done Stanford undergrad and talking to them about it. It, you know, Stanford's an amazing institution and they had an amazing time, but we had very different undergraduate experiences, which was very interesting. Um, and that kind of came to light when I was applying for Peking University because so Stanford has these like little summer internships that you can apply for, which are wonderful. And, you know, they pay you to do research. They'll pay for all your accommodations. They'll organize everything for you. Um, so I was lucky enough to be accepted into that program and to get to go do research in China for a month, a couple of weeks. Um, and, but that was something I had to seek out a lot more on my own. So they do make these available, but I had to do my own research. I had to find what I was interested in. And, you know, I happened to stumble upon this one that just perfectly fit into what I was trying to do and what I was interested in and into what I was studying. And so I had, you know, I applied, um, but I will say the difference, it was interesting to see that con contrast because I do feel that at a smaller school, they're much more able to, you know, individualize and come to you and be like, hey, this is something that might interest you. That's wonderful. And and uh, what do you, what are the, the so you've, you've now received your degree at Stan, from Stanford, correct? Yes, finally <laughs> done with school. <laughs> well, um, what are you going to be practicing? Are there other degrees that you're going to look at or is, is this the launch pad now for your career, do you think? Um, so I, I started work, um, I've been working at a health tech company and I think for now, I want to stay at this company probably for two years at least. And it, but I do think that eventually I'm going to want a higher degree. So it's a matter of whether that degree is going to be a PhD or an MD. Um, that's still very much in the, up in the air. Uh, I, you know, do love school. I did very much enjoy my graduate experience. I think 
grad school is a lot different than undergrad because all of a sudden everyone's doing all the readings. All of a sudden you're very interested in everything that's assigned to you and it's stuff that's very relevant to what you want to be doing in the world. So it doesn't feel like homework so much as you know you get to just have great discussions with people. Um, and so definitely think I would want to go on to specialize even further. Um, I just haven't quite figured out. I'm hoping that in the next year, as I develop more in my career and in my role at this company, I'm able to have a better idea of what degree would offer me more opportunities um, and would allow me to do more of what I want to do down the line. That sounds great. And, and just so for our listeners, what tell us a little bit about your role that you p play now at, for this this. Is it a startup company in Silicon Valley? Is yeah, that? so it's a startup. Um, it's called Evidation Health. And so we're focused on how can we use everyday health data to inform health outcomes. And so a lot of it is that we have this platform, we're doing um, digital health research. So we're working with a lot of big companies, um, with health companies, pharma companies, and helping them create clinical trials in, on a digital platform. Um, and a lot of it is using, you know, wearables and uh, such. But I am on the health outcomes research team. So we're kind of more on the health side of things. And my team specifically, we focus on, are we like, the feasibility of studies. So we're, companies are coming to us, they're telling us, hey, this is something we want to look into. You know, this is, this is what X, Y, and Z that we want to find out. We actually design the study for them. Um, so we go through all those talks of what's feasible, you know, how many participants, patients should we have? But we're able to do research on a much grander scale because now we can, you know, we're not limited to one location. We're able to attract all over the U.S. and um, recruit from all over the U.S. And my team, like, I, it's something that's really cool is we actually get to be there through the, all the steps, steps of the study. So we help with the design side. We help with the implementation side. We help with the monitoring. So once the study is launched, making sure, like, everything's going as planned. Um, we're collecting the data. We're collecting valuable data. And this is that what we're want to be seeing then we also help with like cleaning the data and analyzing it as well if you do you know and and obviously this is the fun part you're young you get to kind of also look at the next steps and if it makes sense as you said getting a, a medical doctor degree uh or a phd I'm, I'm just wondering tell tell me a little in our audience a little bit more from from your perspective how haverford sets you up for that and you know it's one of the top producers per capita i know uh, in the sciences. So that what that means typically is that people coming from places like Haverford have a much greater chance because they do research as you did as an undergraduate. They co-author, they get perfect, they have close relationships with professors. Those professors can personally really vouch for you and other students at your school, like places like Haverford and say, you know, this student would be great to get the PhD um, or, you know, the MD. I, and, and, have you seen that where that really helps um, pave the way for a PhD for classmates say, and the fact that maybe they don't have to pay for five to seven years, you know, that that's all fu fully funded typically. Right. I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think, I mean, a big part of why, what I think was very unique to my time at Haverford and, you know, talking to friends after is you do a thesis. So everyone at Haverford does a thesis. And in the sciences, what that means most of the time is that you're doing a lab thesis. So you're doing research for at least a year, usually two years. You get very comfortable being in a lab. You get very comfortable being in a lab by yourself. You're not just in lab for chemistry class, you know, for my orgo class. It's like you have a continuous project that you are working on. And that's something that I feel like you usually only really get in the work setting, you know, most places don't give you that year of ex year, two years of experience. And so coming out of it, I mean, even when I was considering doing more research out here in labs, I realized I knew a lot, you know, I was very ahead of the curve in terms of like being able to plan out my own protocols, being able to plan out my own studies, figure like not having someone tell me what to do at all time. I knew how to use a lot of the instruments on my own. I didn't need help on that. I, you know, I did some research on some summers like at UCSF labs, 
I was able to use a lot of the machinery. I'd already seen it. It wasn't, it wasn't new to me, which I thought was, you know, it's pretty cool to come in as a sophomore in college and be like, oh yeah, I do know how to do this. And I, oh yeah, I've done this before and I've done this. Um, so I think that was very unique. I think, I mean, all my, for grad school, like even for my master's, all my, it was all Harvard professors that wrote my recommendation letters and they were so sweet about it, more than happy to write it. Um, you know, still catch up to this day. Like, as I was saying, I go back to campus and I'll message some of my professors and let them know I'm coming back and we'll grab coffee and catch up and hear about what life is. Like, I very much feel that I was able to create a lot of personal connections, which, you know, how many students get to say, oh, I've had breakfast at my professor's house, like multiple times. You know, they used to invite us, they, we would have class at their house instead of having it in classroom and they'd make brunch for all of us or they'd make dinner for us. We'd babysit for their kids. Um, it's a very involved community, um, which I think, you know, sets you up well for its connections you're making for life. So going forward, you're able to use those connections. It opens up um, a bunch of other doors um, and they're people that are truly willing to vouch for you. Um, in future endeavors. That's so exciting, Sabina. And I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm really, uh, the, it's wonderful the work you're doing. I'm really, and I'm really eager to hear how it proceeds, you know, and what path you decide to take, because it'll be so interesting. If you, I mean, these are different doors, right? One physician, you can still do research, but PhD is more, more research oriented. So that, exactly. thank you so much. Uh, this has just been really wonderful catching up with you. And I think our audience is going to get a lot out of this to learn more about how liberal arts work and what colleges specifically like Haverford can offer students. I think that's really powerful. And I just want to thank you so much for your time. Yeah, and of course. I mean, thank you for opening my eyes up to Haverford. <laughs> My pleasure. And uh, let's stay in touch because I can't wait to hear the next step for you. It's really exciting. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much, David. Have a good summer. I'll talk to you soon. You too. Bye-bye. Okay. Nice to meet you.